to the Way Vibe. I'm Shelley. And I'm Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about venues and what to consider when choosing your venue. Awesome. Uh, so, first of all, uh, there are millions of different kinds of venues. Yeah, a venue doesn't physically mean here's a stately home in a beautiful English countryside. It used to be that, you know, you went to the local hotel, right? Uh, you know, that was it. Yeah. Uh, but now, thankfully, we have a million different things to choose from, depending on what your vibe is. Yeah. We're all about the vibe. Absolutely. Don't know if I've mentioned that before. So, different kinds of venues. Um, Stately homes, barns, converted something, somethings, TVs. Warehouses. Everything. Anything. Pubs. I did um, a wedding, not well, a couple of years ago, and it was um, a converted cow shed. Awesome. There's so many different places you can get married. Uh, the thing that we should talk about, however, uh, while we're talking about the venue thing, is um, in this country, you cannot get married wherever you like. Mm. Oh, sad, sad day, series. very, very sad day. Uh, up in Scotland, I think it's slightly different, uh, but you cannot, if you're thinking about getting married outdoors, uh, it has to be under a structure. A fixed structure that cannot be removed. Yeah. So uh, some places have like little gazebo type things that you can get married under, so you can have sort of an outdoor ceremony. Um, but, but with that, you physically need to be inside that yes. structure Yes, you do. for the legal bit. For the legal bit. Uh, but at the same time, you can look at the other option of getting married somewhere else and then doing your thing afterwards. Like having a celebrant, like the lovely Zena Birch, who's amazing. Uh, uh, you know, and have, or having a hand tying or something like that. Yeah. A totally hippie man. So there's different kinds of ceremonies and we'll be chatting about that in a different film. So, venue, more of how big does it need to be? Um, yeah. How many guests do you want to be there? So what do you do when you want your guests to stay in the venue? Do they have rooms that they can hire out? Maybe. Or you could do like camping. It's like if you're having a festival wedding and a teepee or something, uh, then you know. Where would I plug my hair straight in then? <laughs> Is it? Well, yeah, it's a wedding. You don't just rock up with three-day-old hair, do you? No, but you, you don't camp until the evening, you daft uh, kid. It's okay. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you can live without your straighteners the next day. Yeah. Of course you can. We all love camping. Or take your own camper van, like me. Yeah. But again, you would need to try and check permission on... Yeah. Camp... It's like farmers fields or something then? Does yeah. there rules around that? Uh, the, <coughs> you can, there is, I think there's a website somewhere uh, that uh, where you can check for farmers fields if that's what you want to do. But a lot of uh, places now, barns and stuff do teepees uh, and, or spirit tents, if that's your thing. And uh, they will happily let you rent out the field. Um, but when you're thinking, if you are thinking about having like uh, a big spare tent or teepee, don't forget you need to hire toilets. Yeah, those are an additional extra. Everyone needs to wee. <laughs> uh, especially if you've had five pints of beer. <laughs> we love a wee. Uh, the, and, uh, you know, uh, thankfully, the toilets are not like Glastonbury. Uh, they're a bit posher these days. Yeah. Uh, and I do believe uh, Ian went to uh, a facility, uh, a TP recently, and he said uh, while he was having a wee, there was a little... LCD screen, he's laughing, LCD screen above the urinal that was playing George Michael. No way. No <laughs> way. Really? And George Michael watching me as I was um, using the facilities. Incredible. Awesome. That is genius, really. It's genius. That is irony, right? It's irony, yeah. man. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. I, th I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, so don't forget to hire the toilets. Uh, it's Costumes. just, uh, you know, additional cost to consider. Yeah, it's it's back to that budget of where you want to spend yeah. your, your hard earned cash. I think people think that when it comes to things like teepees and marquees and stuff, uh, it's probably cheaper than hiring, you know, your big country house venue, but that's not necessarily true. Yeah. Um, you know, the on a par with every other venue really you know and um, again if you if you're hiring teepees uh, you don't just hire one no there's probably going to be three there yeah at maybe. least three yeah yeah um, 
and they all need dressing, so it's literally just an empty structure. Yeah. So you need Love to fill teepee. that with stuff. Love a teepee. Yeah. Uh, they are cool, but um, yeah, just think about all those things. So again, venue-wise, um, another massive thing to think about is your catering. So if the venue has their own caterers, um, great. Um, but if you are looking for something a little bit different, then you need to make sure that your caterer can do what you want at that venue and get them to go down and do a site visit. I think that's the most important thing to do. If they can hook up to generators and whatnot, if it's outdoors. Yeah, if you're planning an outdoor wedding, for instance, <coughs> uh, they can't just rock up if there's no kitchen. Uh, so <laughs> you, can't, you can't make burritos with no kitchen. Can't make burritos without any kitchen. <laughs> damn. We don't want salad. Nobody wants salad on a wedding day. Ooh, no. God damn no. That doesn't soak up anything. <laughs> Could you explain to people what exclusive use means? So this isn't a defined thing, but I would say that you're not going to have randoms walking around your wedding and chipping in on your wedding pictures, and that the venue is closed off to members of the public. Yeah, uh, there are some venues that I've shot at that are still open to the public and if you're uh, getting married outdoors um, or having a ceremony where, you know, if you're getting married in a barn and the barn doors are open and people can drive by or walk by, uh, then... Yeah. Yeah, kind of ruins the moment a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, so yeah, you, you sometimes you get it slightly cheaper if it's open to the public on certain days. Mm -hmm. Um, but exclusive use tends to be a bit more expensive, right? Yeah. If it's a larger venue, um, which um, can house maybe two or three weddings per day, then, um, you know, again, that will probably be reflective in your price anyway that you're hiring for the venue. But I would, you know, make sure that you know fully what is yours and what isn't yours and if there's going to be anybody at blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's going to be anybody else there. Um, you know, walking past your, your venue and chipping down your wedding pictures. And it's a bit weird if you've got more than one wedding at a venue. It's like, yeah. what is that about? Because, you know, I don't know. I think you want to feel that your day is like the most special thing in the world. and Which it will be, yeah. But yeah, but if there's another bride knocking about, it's yeah, a bit weird, isn't I it? I think that is a little bit weird. Nah. Wedding factories, man. Mm. Don't do it. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd go for the exclusivity. <laughs> Again, if your budget would yeah. would take that, but I would prefer exclusive use. Yeah. There's okay. a couple of um, stately homes not too far from where I live in Yorkshire, and they have <laughs> they have the the house open till four o'clock. Um, yeah. And uh, there were members of the public walking around while they're having their champagne. <laughs> And canapes, drinks between the ceremony and the reception, which was okay, awkward, something awkward. Which side are you on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bride on the groom's side. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. <coughs> so again, just check with the venue on making sure that you have got exclusive use or not, and if you're happy with that and what you have access to in certain areas, because you might look at a venue and think, my goodness, those gardens are beautiful, mm. but actually, you may not have access to those because they're cordoned off because of public use or if another couple have already hired that part of the house or garden area. I'm going to talk about um, different times of year uh, because uh, if you're getting married in November, uh, try not to go and look at your venue in June. Uh, That's a great tip. Yeah, mm. because the light will be different everywhere you go uh, and if you choose a venue because it's got beautiful landscape grounds and in November it's just brown. Just no brown. Waves, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's just brown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you think, oh, look at that beautiful venue that I can see. It's whoopy countryside. Capability, landscape, loveliness. No, not in November. It's all a bit brown. So, you know, consider that. Uh, and consider where your toilets are. I keep going back to toilets. I'm, I'm slightly <laughs> obsessed about weird. <laughs> uh, some venues don't have the toilets in the actual place and you have to have a little... A little detour. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, might not be a big thing for you. Um, it is for you, clearly. I don't care, but, you know. Yeah. Everyone needs to wee. Fact to life. It is a fact I love wee. <laughs> 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 uh, 
It's something else to consider, that's all I'm saying. It is, it is. <sighs> um, if there is a venue where you can't stay the night before or they don't have rooms, just double check and see if there's anywhere that you can actually sort of get changed for bridal prep or if you're sort of, I know that some in Yorkshire don't have a suite for you to sleep in yeah. the night before or the yeah. night of the wedding, but they will give you access to a room to do bridal prep. Yeah, because uh, if you turn up to get ready for your wedding and your ceremony is at one and you can't get access to your bridal suite until midday, then you're a bit stuffed really. Yeah. So check what the accessibility is on that. Front. There's no such thing as a daft question. Yay! I don't think so. I'm full of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, ask your venue because you, you've got to make sure that it's it's right for you. And God forbid you get like two weeks before the wedding and then they say, oh, actually, no, you can't have access to the bridal suite because it's turnaround time or just being prepared, really, so you don't get any kind of disappointments or little surprises. Yeah. Don't, you know, some people think that uh, the bar should be open at all times. Oh yeah, boys I'm, love that, don't they? I'm, I'm, I'm very much <laughs> on the must open the bar, uh, but during before the ceremony, a lot of places don't. Even... Is that like a like a a, a law thing, or know. is that just a venue thing? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you, they don't open the bar. <laughs> so uh, if you're planning to have a quick beer beforehand, you have to go to the pub nearby. Let's hope there's a pub nearby already. Just saying. I, still, I didn't know. That. I'm all about the beer. Yeah, go. and late license. Late license! If they it's kick you out at 11, ah, oh, man, then what are you going to do? Yeah. Go to party until at least one, right? I think so. Yeah. Drag it out as much as possible. That's what Brits oh. do best. Yeah. Uh, hit us up with some comments, people. Uh, let us know uh, if there's anything you want to ask. Uh, yeah, like again, that. no such thing as a stupid question. So if we've not covered what you want to know then let us know yeah cool hit the subscribe button as well while you're there somewhere down there i don't know uh and uh, we'll see you next time uh we've been the wedding vibe goodbye Bye. Bye.